introduce myself. Let me see if I can hit recording real quick. Okay. Um, my name is Tammy Cyrus, and I am Director of Professional Development with MBA Research and Curriculum Center. I am, I've been a part of the professional development team for MBA for the past three years, and so I'm really new into um, the role of um, director. I do want to um, point out that I am a former business and marketing teacher from North Carolina and that I just finished my 14th year within the classroom, ending my teacher career just on June 13th. So I'm fresh out of the classroom. Um, while I was in the classroom, I used a lot of MBA resources. And so I'm not just someone that's going to be sharing with you things that MBA offers, but also someone who's actually used these resources as well. Um, in addition to talking a little bit about MBA, I would also like to share a little bit about um, WiseLearn. That is a absolute new thing for Wisconsin, that having the chance to look through it and um, look over it, um, that is something that you guys, um, it's just, it's an awesome resource that I'm hoping that people will take advantage of, teachers will take advantage of, and use these resources. Um, then tomorrow, I'm going to have another webinar that I'll come back and talk a little bit more in depth about MBA research itself. So today, what I want to kind of share with you is that my particular goals for the day is going to be to explain who we are as far as MBA research and our purpose, to understand how to access research-based instructional resources for your programs, um, how to access the MBA, Le MBA Learning Center, and then just an overview of the MBA Learning Center. And if you'll notice, I have this red line that goes across the top for the first few slides that says, if you will um, self-mute, then that way we can kind of be interactive. So if there's someone that has a question for me that you can kind of chime in um, to kind of let me know, we can kind of stop there. If I have to mute everybody, then I, I lose that and I feel like I'm talking to myself. So if I can get all of you to make sure that you're self-muted and that way we can kind of make this as seamless and informative as we possibly can. Are there any questions so far? Are we good? All right, well, I'm going to move on. Um, so who are we? With MBA Research, our whole goal, um, we're a nonprofit, and it's to support you as teachers in the classroom, specifically business and marketing teachers. But I do realize that WiseLearn um, goes across um, the curriculums to include a, a lot of the other uh, a lot of the other CTE content areas. Um, so there are some things that can be pulled out, but our whole goal is to provide those resources to make it a little bit easier for the teachers while they're in the classroom. We currently have approximately 28 um, states that are considered um, a part of our consortium. Um, there are member states that we work with those Department of um, Education for each one of those states to, to provide those resources, whether it be customizing them, or whatever resources we currently have available um, with those states. And we, we work with them to find out what the needs are um, and then try to bring those things into the classroom for each one of those member states. Our information that we put together, our resources that we put together for MBA research is all built around what is known as our instructional system. And if you can look, see the screen, and I know some of you are, are not able to, but we have five different solar system planets, if you will, um, within our instructional system that starts with businesses. And to kind of let you know how that works, with our businesses, they're the ones that we actually have a lot of things set up that work with different businesses throughout the country to find out what their needs are, um, what it is that they're looking for with potential employees. That information is brought back to MBA Research. Um, we look at that information and try to align that with our national standards. Um, once that information is aligned with the national standards, then we look at how we can incorporate that into our curriculums, whether it be existing curriculums, whether We have States Connection and Action Briefs and a lot of other things um, that would fall under that instruction piece. And then we also offer um, assessments, proof of learning for those pieces of information that we send to businesses. And it kind of starts back over again um, as far as a never ending cycle. So that's kind of the gist of how it works with MBA as far as working with our instructional system to create the resources that we have available today as well as in the future. Any questions on that? Are we good? Okay, so the first piece that I want to take a look at is going to be WiseLearn. And there is a link um, that is going to give you access to a 
table of contents for WiseLearn that you need to make sure that you keep this safe. Um, this particular link is on the screen um, for you, the goo.gl forward slash one capital Y, three capital J, capital B, and then lowercase p. If you type that in, which if you're driving or if you're listening, I know you might not have that ability to do so, um, but to type that in is going to take you to the table of contents that MBA has put together um, for some of the resources that's um, available within WiseLearn. We're going to take a look at that in just a minute. But I kind of want to go through a couple of slides and then we'll go out there and take a look. So here are some of the things that you actually can find available on WiseLearn. Um, we um, had a partnership with um, the State Department to actually create some of these things or make these things available in WiseLearn. And some of the assignments and some of the resources that you're going to find consist of learning modules, which are lab modules, um, assessment pieces, different projects, activities, rubrics, is, and also project planning tools. So those are some of the things that you'll find. You'll also find that some of those resources are not MBA resources, but just resources that MBA thought was very beneficial, um, and resources that we use in putting our information together that we thought that we would pay it forward and share that information with you as well. To give you an example of what that looks like, and again, we'll go out there in just a minute, but to give you an example of, of what WiseLearn kind of looks like, when you actually go into a particular topic area and look, this is going to be a similar screen. It may look, it looks very similar in the beginning, but once you go in depth and click on some of the links, it kind of looks different from resource to resource. But on this particular one, and, and Tim, this is where if you want to kind of chime in with me, you can. Um, you're more than welcome to. Um, this is an, um, an example of what one of the resources might would look like. It's giving you information as far, an overview, as far as an overview of what the actual resource is, but it also is giving you information relative to your Wisconsin standards, how this particular activity or resource um, aligns with the standards for Wisconsin. And you'll see that there are several different ones that it could potentially align with um, to take a look at that. So that's kind of giving you what the screen looks like when you go into WiseLearn. I think this is some really viable information and um, I'm jealous in a lot of ways because I, I would have liked to have had something like this within my classroom to use along with MBA stuff. Um, here's an example that on this particular screen, if you click on view resource, um, it would open up to this um, um, resource right here. This particular one is a project description that has given you um, an actual project that you could bring into your classroom. It's providing for you the driving question um, for anybody who would do project-based learning or who would want to do projects within the classroom. This would be maybe a good um, project that you could bring in. A couple of things that I want to bring attention to on this is you have the description of what the project is. This is just a screenshot, so I can't scroll down on this screen but I will show it to you in a minute. Um, but you have some different views that are up um, within this particular area. Um, you've got your details, which is about the project itself. You, you're seeing that link there that would be for standards. And then you have what is known as your resource library. And that resource library is information that is for you, the teacher, um, to give you what um, additional resources that you're needing for this particular project that would help you while you're in the classroom. Um, you also could get the opportunity to look at student view. So as students were out here um, with you, that you could see exactly what it is that they're seeing. Um, so if there's ever a question as to what they can view and what they can see, that's how you can kind of tell um, what that is as well. Any questions on that before I actually take you into um, WiseLearn? I have Dropbox trying to go all kind of places. Let me, I've already got it up. So here we go. So you have you will have access um, to this particular um, Google Doc. It is the table of contents for WiseLearn. And just to show you some of the information, all of these are topic specific um, that they go in. Um, these are all bookmarked to go down to the the areas that this is several pages long that goes down to certain links that focuses, for example, on economics and then. If you continue on, you've got employability skills, and the list goes on and on as you go through. And if you'll notice, these are all in alphabetical order. The topics are in alphabetical order as you go through. But one of the things that um, our program manager did when she was putting this together is she 
kind of highlighted some of the purple ones that she thought could be um, cross curricular um, to let, you know, could be things that could be used in more than just business and marketing classes. So I kind of wanted to take a look. One of the ones that you saw on that screenshot is this one right here, the power to the people. So if I click on that link, it's going to take me into WiseLearn. And things have decided to go slow. I have it open. Let's see if I can go to it right here. So um, when you are in, um, when you click on that, this is what you get. You get your project. The driving question is telling you the different tasks that are there. Not sure how many of you may be familiar with some of your project management tools that are available, but you've got your project charter that you could download that for your students to fill out, the project scope statement as well. And it just kind of goes on and on to go um, absolutely through um, your project and every step that would be involved with this particular one. A um, lot of information that you can sh that you can use. There's some information that might be more than what you need. So you kind of pick and choose what it is that you're trying to do and to customize it to fit your classroom. So this kind of goes on for a while, but it just shows you all the different levels or all the different pieces to make the project work within your classroom. So when I said earlier that you've got a resource library, these are all of those same downloads that you were seeing earlier that you can just go here um, for, as the teacher without having to, to scroll down to find them and to be able to download this information. You also have your standards that are here too that um, this particular project aligns with those Wisconsin standards. Um, and then if you wanted to see what the students were actually seeing, you could preview that as well to see that they're not quite seeing everything that you see. So where you're seeing everything stacked one um, on top of the other, you actually are just seeing an entry event for each one that you would just um, use your air keys to advance to the next thing, um, to the next phase of that particular project. Um, so that's one of the examples. To go back up here to another one, and Tim, is there any certain one that you would like for me to go show? I know you're probably a little bit more familiar with all of these than I am. Oh, Tammy, I think you're doing great. I just wanted to clarify one thing that I just want to make sure okay. everyone understands. Um, every, all of the resources that you are seeing on this table of contents are meant to be all cross-curricular for CTE, and the ones that are highlighted in purple are the ones that are going to be the ones that we were going to showcase during professional development to indicate kind of right. the different types of resources that MBA research offers, from rubrics for assessments to projects for full laps. So, so I, want, I want everyone to understand that the 200 links that are from that table of contents were strategically handpicked to be able to meet everyone's needs regardless of what CT content area you're representing. So I can go back to you, right. Tammy. You can choose, you can choose any you know, ethical leadership, I think, are, are some newer uh, laps and resources that are outstanding that I think really are applicable to all, all areas. So if you want to choose one of those. Okay. Um, and I, I chose one when we talked last week in the marketing section with within the product service management with an ethical leadership, but we can choose one really within any area that you'd like and you can keep, keep going. Okay. Um, so I'll show one in ethical leadership that's an actual lab module and um, to show you that what that entails. We have lab modules that are housed in our learning center um, and, and as well as some that are here um, for you guys to see. So when you're looking at it here in WiseLearn, it's going to look a little different as far as the layout of it than what it would in the learning center. Um, but the, the information is there um, as far as how it works. Um, our lab modules um, um, are very topic specific with the target audience of high schoolers in mind um, that allow you to be able to pick and choose those pieces of the lap module that you can actually bring in. It's like a lesson that you could bring into the classroom. And every time that I was doing my lesson planning, if there, were, um, there was ever a lap module that was a part of that topic, as I was writing my lesson plans, I always use those. Um, I may not use every part of that lap module. Um, there is a handout piece that goes with that, that everything else is built around the reading guide or the student handout. Um, so I always make sure that if there was a lap module within any lessons that I was planning, that I brought those lap modules into my classroom. Um, but to show you this one, this particular one is called Be the Change, and it's talking about the nature of ethical leadership. I'm going to click here. 
And so you'll see again that same idea of stacking the different things that are available um, for you to see. But you have what is known as the student narrative, which is also the learning guide, the learning guide, I mean the reading guide or the um, student handout um, that's available to you. It could be um, is viewed as a PDF file. You also, in addition to that, and I'll show that to you in a second, have um, what's known as a discussion guide. So when you're looking at that, if you're not quite sure how to to bring that um, into the classroom, to how to get it up, set up for discussion, that there's a discussion guide to kind of help you, um, to guide you along. And if you are that visual person that really likes presentations or PowerPoints, then you also have the ability to download the PowerPoint um, and to use that or pieces of that as well. Um, in addition to that, there are also activities that are already created, um, whether it be individual activities or group activities that you could bring into your class room and again these are like foundational pieces if you wanted to tweak these to make these work a little bit better maybe you wanted to add something to it then you're more than welcome to do that as you are doing this because again this is you taking this information and customizing it to make it your own um, there's group activities as well use and after a while they seem an overwhelming because there's so much information but the biggest piece Bear in mind that you do not have to use every piece of them to make them effective. Choose what it is that you're wanting to use. Um, you've got your learning guide that um, is like a, a series of questions all throughout um, the, the narrative or the reading guide itself. I use this part in my classroom to have students take notes with it because there's also a post test that would be um, available to you as well, which is right here. Um, and a lot of times the questions in the learning guide um, kind of drive how the questions in your post test are gonna be written. Your post tests are multiple choice, the majority of them. Sometimes there might be an essay piece, but the majority of them are multiple choice questions um, that you would have available um, to, to bring into your classroom. So if I look up at the resource library and show you this, if I showed you the um, trying to do it without pulling down something really big to say if we wanted to view um, this is what a, a student handout or the reading guide would look like and my things are going really slow today all of a sudden it's working really good <laughs> I'm not going to take your time to kind of sh to, to to try to make this pull up. Um, not quite sure why it's not letting me see it, but um, to go back to it and see if I can pull something else in. I think I might have that same issue. That's the one I could view. I don't want to go there. Oh, here we go. <laughs> if I had known that it was going to go this slow, I would have already had these downloaded. Okay. Now, 
So this is what a learning guide looks like um, as far as asking specific questions um, about the student handout, the reader, the reading guide that's there. And like I said, on this particular thing, what I would do is have my students actually take notes um, answering these questions. And so that when it comes to the post test, that they actually would have the meat, so to speak, of the information that they would um, have it, you know, already have learned and hopefully had taken notes on to be able to understand what those post test questions were asking. Um, Let's see if I can go back. We finished here and here. I'm not quite sure why this isn't opening. Um, let me go back out to something else that might not be a lap module. This one is in the marketing topic. And let's view this. I think this is a lap module as well. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so on these, like you, as you can see, there are a lot of things to choose from, a lot of things I would like to show you. Um, but the gray zone is a piece of our learning guide. I mean, our reading guide that um, allows you to bring ethics into the classroom. It's a, it's a scenario, an ethical scenario that you can bring in. Um, you also have total recall questions, which are just um, exactly that. It's a recall, having students recall what they have learned, what they've read about with the reading guide. Um, and again, on this one, if you take notice, you've got all of these things available to you as well. Um, again, not quite sure why come I can't get the PDF to pop up but it sure is not wanting to. Um, up here, because it is a lab, you've got that narrative, that student handout that I'm referencing with the reading guide. You've got the PowerPoint, you've got your discussion guide that's there as well. Again, you've got a new set of, of activities, whether it be individual or group activities. Um, and then you've got some other pieces. Um, you can actually download these individually to look at, look at the individual assignments, um, um, or you can, um, you know, or the group assignments as well. You've got your learning guide. Again, that's the piece that I use to take notes, or my students would take notes. And then you've got your post test. So you've got a lot of good information that you can pull um, and use within your classroom from just that one lab itself. I'm mean, looking at some of the other things. I know that when we were looking. Um, on Thursday, there were some pieces that were like um, going out to other things that were not lab modules. Um, when you're looking at this table of contents, the things that are yellow is a work in progress. These are things that they're currently working on that's not quite there um, as far as being set up as a link yet that you would find there. Um, let's see, I don't know. I wonder what that is, if that is. Um, this right here is an action brief. Our action briefs are actually found in our States Connection, which is another MBA resource um, that you can kind of go through. It gives you a workplace um, scenario of something that may have happened or has happened. And then it helps you figure out how to actually bring it into discussion um, for your classroom. Um, so they're topic specific as well. And again, um, these are some that's been pulled out for WiseLearn, but there's some additional ones that you could find um, under State Connection, which you would have access to as well. Um, any questions on WiseLearn? I don't see anything for chat, so I'm hoping I'm not missing anything. No questions for WiseLearn. Tim, did you want me to show anything else here before I moved on to the Access and Learning Center? Nope, you're all set. Okay. So, to go back to um, 
the MBA Learning Center. The only thing that I want to do today is just give you an overview of the Learning Center and then to tell you if you have not signed up for it, how what you need to do to get signed up for it. Um, we will have a second webinar tomorrow um, that will actually go into the Learning Center um, and show you a few things that are available there to you within the Learning Center to kind of get you started with it. Um, but it's important that if you do not have have an account that you get yourself set up today so the MBA can actually um, create your account for you. Um, in creating your account, what will happen is you'll receive an email from them that you'll need to finish creating your account. If you don't do those steps, then you're not going to be able to go in and take a look while we're there tomorrow if you are planning on coming back um, to the to the webinar tomorrow. So some of the things that the MBA Learning Center makes available to you um, are just some information for need to know purposes is that it's made a, um, it is a one-stop learning management system that is built using Canvas, the Canvas platform. Um, and it pretty much has a lot of curriculum and instructional resources there, whether it be LAPS, whether it be the ability to download all of your laps at one time, whether it be just for use, which is just a, a very small or a nugget piece of, um, of an assignment that you can bring into your classroom. Currently, there are um, 300 plus comprehensive topic specific research based lessons that are there. Um, so again, it can get a little overwhelming, but you can search for keywords if you're looking for, for particular topics. Um, there's some things in there such as engaging activities, projects, videos, as well as articles that would be a part of um, the resources that are available. Um, you also have assessments, um, post-test assessments that are in there that you can use or you have the ability to create your own, to build your own exams, um, particularly if you are a CTSO advisor and you're looking for ways to, um, to get your students prepared for competition. Um, you can set up your own exams um, within that to kind of help um, along the way with getting them ready. Other things that would be available to you with the MBA Learning Center is that you are given the discussion guides and the presentations, your PowerPoints, um, as well as uh, group activities, um, individual activities, and you can take and customize those and make those your own. Um, the information that you'll see in the Learning Center is 100% standards aligned content. The target audience is high schoolers. Um, there is an optional student access that you do have. You can use this solely for your filing cabinet, um, your library of information that you can kind of house all of your resources together and make it easily readily, um, readily available to you. Or you could have student access. There's additional charge for that. Um, I believe that the, the access that you've been giving um, is for teacher only, but you do have that as a potential resource, particularly once you get a little bit more, more familiar with the Learning Center. Some of the things that your students could do is interactive things, like they can complete their test online within the Learning Center. Um, you can keep your grade book in that, a calendar, and there's some other things, your discussion boards and things like that, that they can be a part of. But if you have your own Learning Management Center um, system that you're working with, then you can easily integrate some of these things by downloading the material and then uploading them into your own Learning Management System. So um, you're not locked into um, using the Learning Center for your students. You can still use what you are accustomed to and what you want to use or what you're required to use when it comes to your learning management systems. Um, but you can easily integrate that information into your current one. So if you do not or have not already set up an account, um, you have free access to the Learning Center. And the way that you need to um, follow up to get your account set up, if you have not done so, is you need to send the following information to help me at mbaresearch.org. The information that you need to send is your name, your email address, but it has to be a school issued email address that is required. Um, in order for you to be able to, to gain access to the Learning Center. Your school name, your school address, and the city, state, and zip for your school are also required. So you'll pretty much just shoot an email at help me at mbaresearch.org with that information and let them know you're from Wis your Wisconsin teacher and you're needing to sign up for the Learning Center. And then what will happen is once you get set up, you'll receive an email um, from MBA that tells you to click on the link to finish um, setting yourself up. And once you do that, you'll have access to the Learning Center. For those of you who already have um, set that account up, um, this is a website that you will need to know in order to get there. It's mba.instructure.com. And once you get there, it's your email address and then whatever your password is that you will use to get yourself signed up for the Learning Center. Are there any questions on that? I'll go back to this screen right here just in case anyone was writing that down.
No questions for me on this one? Are we good here? Okay. And again, mba.instructure.com. So um, as I mentioned earlier, there will be a webinar tomorrow at five o'clock, your time, um, to take a more in-depth look into the MBA Learning Center. Um, and it, again, if you signed up for the Learning Center today, please be sure to check your email sometime tomorrow so that you can finish the process for setting up your Learning Center account. That way you can go in there as we're kind of talking tomorrow and I'm, I'm showing you some things. Any questions for me? Tim, is there anything else that you wanted me to share while I'm here? No, I think it's a great start. Those individuals that are following along right now, the table of contents resources that are connected within the Wise Learn section really is just the tip of the iceberg. And I think it's important okay. as you review those resources that are within that document that if you find resources that you want more information on or really start getting excited about projects, assessments, uh, you know, student student resources, PowerPoints, and beyond, that's when you really can get into the Learning Center side. And for those of you that can join Tammy for the training tomorrow or be able to re review that training that will also be posted within WiseLearn, I think it's going to be an awesome, awesome start that's going to really positively impact everyone's program and curriculum. And I think the biggest thing is what I would suggest everyone that's listening is that don't be overwhelmed because you can take baby steps where you can find one or two items that may positively impact maybe a, a unit within a class, or maybe you can start transforming a whole class, or maybe you can start thinking about ways that you're preparing for student organizations. If it's FBLA to DECA to HOSA to FCCLA and beyond. And I think it's also very important to think about for those students that you've got working for work-based learning programs, and how they may be able to support employability skills and from our academic and career planning, our ACP initiatives within Wisconsin, all of these resources really are aligned not only for our Wisconsin Common Career Technical Standards, the WCCTS, but then also we've got our business information technology and the marketing management entrepreneurship standards. And lastly is those, those crosswalks, the standards connection for MBA research laps and resources can be found in that table of contents in, in the MBA research section. So for those of you that are following along right now, or you can do this after the call, to be able to look at those crosswalks. This is the exciting part where you can start looking at those specific crosswalks to say, all right, let's look at this standard and then what lap, what instructional resource can I then find within the learning center to be able to really connect the dots to be able to elevate what you're teaching and learning in the, in the classroom. Tim, where was that at, that crosswalk? I know that's here, but I just, I don't, I didn't, I wasn't paying attention on Thursday when you went there as far as where you yeah. right here. It's in, the, it's on kind of near the end section. It's in the MBA research section. Right. Uh, and you've and got them broken down be, by business. Yeah, there, there's one that's the straight crosswalk with BIT for business information technology. There's another one for MME, for Marketing Management and Entrepreneurship. There's one that's the WCCTS, which is the Wisconsin Common Career Technical Standards. And then there's some also that there's going to be that are combining combining those as well. So the WCCTS along with either marketing or with business. So starting small with the WCCTS, that document a handful of pages, maybe 15 pages or less, that you can start crosswalking from communication to creativity to technology to a variety of different areas within our our, our common career technical standards area. And then, of course, the, the crosswalks within business and information technology and marketing management and entrepreneurship are much more exhaustive and longer, but I think I would suggest everyone listening and following along that you can look by unit, look by course, and then you could be able to start honing in specifically on topics that you want to be able to build upon. Maybe you have areas that are strong and you want to make stronger, or maybe you have units that 
you don't cover uh, with enough information. And this is a great way for you to be able to start saying, hey, we did a crosswalk analysis and start saying, like, we didn't we don't cover these standards within either the department or within across departments for your current technical education departments within your district. And it's a great way for you and your other colleagues to be able to start collaborating together. Great. And I put up an example of one of those crosswalks just to give an idea of what that looks like. Um, just took me a minute to get there. <laughs> but um, so um, a lot of good stuff or a lot of, of great stuff that's there. And um, so are anybody have any other questions I, at all? I don't think I'm saying that now I didn't mute anybody. So I'm assuming that everybody is self muted, that if they had a question for me. No, if there are no questions um, for me that I'm going to invite you to come back and um, to the webinar tomorrow night at five o'clock or tomorrow evening at five o'clock and we'll go into the learning center and give you a chance to see what that looks like. Um, so if there's nothing else for me, I hope you all got all of you guys have a, a good evening and I look forward to working with you soon. Now take care.